care. In the book of Chronicles, 2 Chronicles particularly, I want to look at the 34th chapter, three verses there, and this story interests me again about Josiah. And as I was looking at the thought of student takeover uh, 2023, I was thinking about reform, reform, someone that can bring about change. The world is constantly decaying and getting worse, becoming richer and wiser, but having no knowledge of God, falling apart at the very, at the very structure of it. And the Bible says in Psalms 11 and, and I think the eighth verse that if the foundation be destroyed, what will the righteous do? And the foundation is the values, values, and we have to hold on to certain values. Everything cannot just be free and go with it. Whatever you want to do, just do it. Because there's repercussions to everything that we do in polluting our world, polluting our waters, even polluting ourselves, there's repercussions to those things. So student takeover 2023, uh, reform, reform, student takeover. And the text in 2 Chronicles 34, 1 to 3, um, it says Joshua was eight years old. I'm reading from the New King James. He was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. And he did that what was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in the ways of his father, David, or his ancestry, David. He did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left hand. He kept straight on. He kept it pushing. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was still young, somebody say young, he began to seek the God of his father, David. And at, thir and at 20 years, I'm sorry, at the 20th year, he, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of the high places and the wooden images and the carving images and the images, images, and all the images, images, and everything that was there. He tore down the model of images. Here's this young man, eight years old, comes to the kingdom with reform. Reform is improvement of what is corrupt and what is wrong unsatisfactory. He begins to amend things, to bring about change, to make it a better condition. Anytime that you want to be a game changer, there's a certain amount of pushback you're going to get because people don't mind change as long as it doesn't affect them. But change is something that has to happen in all of our lives because that's a part of life. Eight years young, but he felt that God had called him to do something that was not normal for a young man. I see him as being one that's soaring. I see our young people that was upper stepping, and I was looking at them and wondering to myself when I grew up in the church, they wouldn't allow us to step nowhere but out in the lobby and back in and be seen and not. But here we are loving them, this generation next, and telling them, come on, don't leave the church. It's going to be the pillar and ground of truth. And you'll be grateful, young people, when God would bless you to grow up and have children. Believe me, you want to have them in church. And wishing many of you that you were in church sooner. So here, uh, Josiah was created to soar, to go higher, to display new joy, thrills, and have a mind of gratitude and of living above the baseline. The beautiful wings that God had given him now were being spread out to realize there was an endless possibility with God to all those who believe. You're not too young to soar. You're not too young to soar. You have the capacity to soar high and go further than we were coming along to do. We had to work our way through it. You're not too young to soar. By show of hands, how many remember the payphone? <laughs> How many don't know nothing about a payphone? All right. If we had payphones now, it would be my office. I would be in there all the times with quarters, just dropping them in there and trying to keep on with the phone call. But we went from the payphone all the way through to the new phones, a, a capacity that can reach anybody at any given time. But payphone was the thing, man. Sometimes I stood in the payphone booth and really thought I was coming out like Superman. 
but it came out like Clinton. Went in, Clinton came out like Clinton. But we see that we're soaring past that. We're going higher. Josiah knew that he was young, but the youth did not stop him from believing what God had told him he was going to have to do. Born to soar, to bring about reform, change, to make things better. Josiah reigned in Judah and in Jerusalem. Even though he was considered a boy in that day, eight years old, you were like a young man. You were coming of age now, and I get it. Uh, when they used to call the little guys like myself, little man, little man, little man. I'm, I'm trying to get my Christmas bike. I don't want to be a little man yet. But they kept pushing us to take on our manlyhood and be responsible. Here he was now 16 years young. And the Bible says he began to understand the office of his responsibility. And at 16 years young in 2 Kings 22, same story, but in the 2 Kings, we see that he was influenced by his mother and the priest, Helikai. Their priest was very instrumental in his life, or the pastor was the one that spoke into his life to help him understand he was going to be structured different. I thank God for Sunday school. I thank God for the mothers in Zion that told me that you cannot go no further. I thank God that when we went to church, went to church everybody was your mom and your daddy. If, and then when they went and took you to your mom and daddy and told them what you did, you got another whooping because you got in trouble with them. Rearing in the house of the Lord is a wonderful thing. I was glad I was raised in the house of the Lord and not in the house of prison. Yes, I'm glad I took it from somewhere and took it from the right place. Glad I was raised in the house of the Lord and not in a drug house. Glad I was raised in the house of the Lord and not just by anybody, but there's good values. They begin to teach this young man. He was of young age, but he was not too young. His responsibilities was to rise, to go higher, indulge in him, to push past, think something greater. The priest began to speak into his life. This generation needs someone to speak into their lives. If you'll be open to hear it, because you don't know everything. Even though you got Siri, Lexis, and Google, Google, you don't know everything. Some things you can't learn unless you go through it. And after you go through it, then you got a testimony, and you can say like the old saint, you can't make me doubt it. I know too much, I know too much, I know too much about the Lord. This king, this king now, be coming to the place of reform. Well, note the text in 2 Chronicles 34 and 3. He decided to seek the Lord. 16 years of age, his heart now turns towards God. He wanted to know about the wisdom of God. Seeking the heart of God in a dark era and a world that's crumbling and falling apart is not an easy thing. Seeking does not mean that God is lost, like you have to find him with a microscope. But it means a concerted effort that you turn your heart towards the things of God. Not seeking the approval of men, but seeking the approval and the validation of God. This wisdom of seeking God, not just human wisdom and understanding can bring this about, but it is the gospel of Jesus Christ that you're going to find God in. The life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you're going to seek him, you're going to seek him as he is. The Bible says in Matthew 5 and 6 that he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. I want to take an excerpt, and not in my notes, but I'm going to take it from Johnny Simon from Chief. He says, people said, well, I'm not being filled. He said, maybe then, Chief said, the food is in your mouth, but you ain't chewing. Thank you, Chief. You have what you need to be filled, but you're not chewing. You have to take the book and then eat the roll and digest it and put it down in your spirit. You can't eat Psalms 23 and come to church and look depressed. You cannot eat Psalms 27 and feel like your life is over. You have to know the word will give you strength. It will give you power. Seeking him in prayer, seeking him in fasting, seeking the Lord by his word, having that, that diligence to go after and pursuing God. Here, this young man, though young, but he had a heart to seek after God. Josiah, Josiah, Josiah here is saying to us, his name means whom Jehovah heals. So his name had a purpose and your name have a purpose. Reform. You take over, 2023. Eight years old, he was called to become king. I don't think he was born thinking he's going to be a king, but God's hand was just on him to become what God wanted him to be, whom Jehovah heals. God is ready to use him and bring him to bring about healing for his people. 
It's finding yourself. Sometimes you won't discover who you are until the right moment presents itself. I didn't know I could sing and still trying to figure that one out. But there's a song that you can't sing that I can sing that makes a melody in my heart that he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I'm his own. All the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has left me alone. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. Yeah, he knows my... Anyway, I want you to understand that God can put a song down in your spirit that when you're going through the darkest time of your life, you can sit there with tears running down your eyes and know that it's going to be all right. If you have it, tell somebody, oh, I got a song. I got a song that the angels can't sing. And that song is that I have been redeemed. It's youth takeover Sunday. So here is what we're saying in the word of God. <laughs> Being born for a purpose, sometimes the moment will arrive that you didn't know was arriving. That lets you know that this is what God was calling you to do. Abraham didn't know that he was going to be birthing a nation. Moses didn't know that he was going to be leading that nation out of bondage. Joshua didn't know that he was going to be the leader to take the prompt, take the people into the promise. Esther didn't know that she came to the kingdom for such a time as this. Ruth didn't know that she was going to be a Moabite connection and get the outcast and make them the end cast. Clinton didn't know he was coming to Las Vegas to build a mountaintop. And jo Josiah was born to bring about reform. I believe in this hour that we live in, there are some youth takeovers that got that Jeremiah fire shut up in their bones, and they know that they were born for something greater. I'm going to unlock and unleash you to do what God told you to do. I believe these student takeovers are game changers. They're going to do something more relevant for this time and this hour. They're going to nerve and bother religious folk what they don't up there stumping and hollering. I'm glad they're stumping and hollering in here and nowhere else. Leave them alone. <laughs> Josiah began to seek the Lord. Seek the ways of the Lord. God, I want to know what's my job? What's my assignment? The Bible says he came in to tear down systems. He began to purge and clean out the rubbish. He removed the wood and images or imageries, strengthened the peoples and refocused their eyes to come back to the faith and trusting God. Systems are good, but some systems need to be changed. I am in a confused state right now, driving. I was driving a Range Rover, but someone gave me a electric car and told me the card was the key. So I got a credit card like a key and I'm touching it on the dash and the car don't hear a sound, it started. I said, well, I don't hear nothing, you're in an electric car, it's different. So I go out of town and I rented a car and they gave me a key. I said, what am I gonna do with this? Once you get upgraded, it's a difficult thing to go back. Oh, I missed a whole lot of folk right there. Once you get upgraded, it's confusing to go back to a kid. And I'm not throwing off, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> so I, I got this, so I got in the car that I was renting, and before I know it, I'm used to putting the shift, touch it, drive, go up, reverse. I got the gear shift in front of me, and I'm moving this thing, and the car ain't doing it. I got out the car, and it kept rolling. It's like, whoa, wait, wait a minute, I gotta put this in park. This new car, you take your foot off the grass and go in the park. It ain't going nowhere. I said, oh, this is the kind of car I, car I need. Meet George Jetson and his boy, Elroy, and Jane, his wife. There's a whole nother upgrade. Look at two people say, you better get to the upgrade. Everything. I can see right now. Wait a minute. Somebody opened my car door. I can see right now that everything is on the phone about the car. Joash, Josiah came in to bring about this reform. Systems are good. Some systems cannot be changed, like prayer, fasting, seeking the Lord, the Word of God, the power of the Holy Ghost. We need those things to build up our spiritual muscles. Cleaning out the rubbish. This eight, 16 year old boy now has to deal with the residue. Can you imagine getting the rubbish and the trauma? 
other people's lives. This negative words that have been spoken against you. You just stop thinking you'll never become anything. But God has a little 16 year old boy said, we're going to do some deep cleaning today. We're going to get all this junk up out your mind and let you know who you really are. He came in to move the wooden images, the images, images. We are in an image society. I went to Google and said, okay, okay Google, what do you say about me? Google says, take a picture of yourself and put it in here or, 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 or just take a picture that you have, put it in the search on the Google search engine. He says, now from this picture, I can determine everything about you. He said, this picture is like a television or a computer. I can take this picture and begin to say who you are and who you're going to become and what life is going to be, what your life is going to be like. I don't know if Google is psychic or whatever, but you can go to the Google search engine, take a picture of yourself, and it will give you a description of who you are. Some of you are on Facebook and all these other platforms trying to find out who you are. And all this is imagery, imagery that's been created that has a whole lot of makeup taken off to make it look better than what it is. And some say, I only want you to see neck up, neck up, neck up. The imagery is something that can mess you up. Here he says now that I can take this and discover myself this search bar, this Google lens, can upload a picture. I said that. It can, re it can search yourself out and give you an image of who you are. I don't like Google's re representation of me because Google doesn't know me. Google didn't make me. Google did, not, Google did not say me. Google, 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 Google. I don't understand Google. Google can drive you crazy trying to figure out stuff. But I did read the word of God. And in Psalms 139, he said, Lord, you've examined me. Me. You know my heart. You know everything about me. You know my down sitting and my uprising. In Psalms 139 and verse 14, he said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are the works of your hand. You've done an excellent job with me. I know I'm cuckoo sometimes, but you know how to straighten me back out. You don't throw me away because I don't fit the part. You know I just got a little glitch in the engine and you can just bring me all the way back. I just got to ask somebody before I finish, won't God snatch you back and bring you into your place and let you know I am the one that gave you life. You don't belong to yourself. You don't belong to yourself. So I thank God that he has made you complex. He's made you and I very unique. Here Josiah is saying that we got to bring change about. We have to refresh things, bring about a new look for God's people. We cannot allow the grasshopper mentality to stop us short of our promise. If God said the land is yours, then the land is yours. Don't let debt or anything that's overwhelming you make you fall short of what God has promised. This take over 2023 is a unique key that God has set us on. And he brought about reform. He wanted us to see from a very young man, but yet he was determined to see God work in his life. So we had to clean up some stuff. His cleaning up was a very hard task because he had older people who have established things that they were not going to move out the way. So the Bible says in Ephesians 3 and 20, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power that works within you. You do your part and God will do his part. You start working towards getting better, God will help you get better. You stop, stop, and God will help you to move it on out your mouth. You stop, stop all then God will help you to keep moving out your mind. He'll help you get better as you want to get better. Nothing helps more than a concerted effort. You take over 2023. Someone told me 20. 23 is the Jordan year. It's your time for you to come up. It's your time for you to step into the fullness of who God wants to make you become. You're going to jump higher. You're going to go further. You're going to leave legacy. You're going to reach your goals. You're not going to let your heart be discouraged by what you're dealing with right now. You are a kingdom child, a kingdom daughter. You're building a long lasting purpose. You're going to find balance in your life. You're going to stop blaming the 
teacher and blaming those who are holding you back. What's holding you back? You got Google. You can go anywhere you want to go. You can start a business before the church service is over. You got everything you need right in front of you. Don't have to have a job. Start a business. That's the power of God's ability in your life. And they won't hire me. Hire yourself. You have everything you need to do what you need to need do. I can't make no money. What? You can't make no money. Click, click. Ask your neighbor to cash app you. You can get everything you need because God has given to you. Somebody got to take over. And I believe it's our time to take over. It's our hour to bring about reform. It's our hour to bring about change. Start of coming to a dead church sitting next to a dead saint. I want to find somebody who know who they are and who they are. Somebody to know had it not been for the Lord. I don't want to get too preachy in here. Who has been on my side? Be truthful about it. You couldn't have made it if God didn't keep you. You would have never made it if God didn't keep you. Oh, don't hold back. Come on, we're the sanctified folk. He did it over and over and over. It's time for change. Preach on your row and tell three people, won't he do it? Y'all ain't talking to nobody. Tell somebody else, every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing. Woo! Rest on your feet quickly. Hold your hands up slight. If you're able to stand, please stand sh just shortly. I'll, I'll get you back, back down in your seat. Hold your hands up very slightly. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, as change come, help me not resist it. Change is good. I've seen it in my life. I'm thankful if it's you. I'm not living in that one room apartment. I'm thankful that I'm above the bugs, the flies, and yada, 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 yada. I thank you that I've been upgraded. Don't let me forget where I come from, because more is to come. I thank you for keeping me in my, in my right mind, right mind. I, know I know I should, I should be, on be on something, but I'm grateful I'm on Jesus Christ. You are the best thing. You are the best thing that ever happened to me. And for the next three seconds, for the next three seconds, I'm going to make my neighbor upset and give you the worthy praise that you do. If you feel like it, look at somebody next to you and tell them, if you knew my story, you run around this church for me. standing there. You should be running. No, no, don't move. Don't move. Don't move.
Watch this, uh, Pastor Junior. I hit a little bit. God is a good God. Shh. Go. Don't don't clap. Let's go. Ahead. Let's five people clap. Just five of y'all. Just five. Go ahead, Elder Junior. That's too many. Okay, this section is hold still, hold still, hold still. Don't clap at all. Don't clap. Don't clap at all. Don't clap at all. I need about five of y'all in this front row here. Y'all clap. That's the church I grew up in. It was only about a few of us. The floor was hard enough we can get a beat. But all we had, my brother Kelvin on the good tire. Finally, a drummer came to church. I said, man, this, this is good. Then I looked up, my brother Tim took on the bass. I said, this change is good. I had one guy playing the organ. I said, oh, this is looking good. And the keyboards kicked in. I was... That was some good church. Oh, Brit, 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 you know about this, don't you? church but I like this church a little better everybody clap your hand if you want prayer come now you want prayer come come you want prayer get to the altar quickly you want prayer general prayer come quickly you want prayer come 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 salvation healing direction come quickly I'm going to pray I'm going to pray I'm going to pray healing in the family healing in the house thank you God bless you Quickly, I'm going to pray. Oh. Come quickly, come quickly. 
just going to pray over your family, pray over your life, pray over friends. If you want someone to pray with you for salvation at the end of this prayer, don't just go back to your seat, but stop for a moment. Let's get some more information. Let them pray with you and pray over you in the name of Jesus. Come quickly, come quickly, come quickly. Y'all acting real feisty today, like y'all ready to the church take over, not you take over. Excellent. Each church, don't leave us, we're praying. Get in this prayer, put the praying hands in the, in the chat. Let them know, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. If you're at the altar, please just hold your hands up slightly, just a sign of receiving. Father, we bless you now for these that are standing here at this altar. We claim it as our holy ground, and we come to lay our hearts before you our concerns and things, oh God, that are challenging to us. We pray, oh God, you would meet us at our point of reach, turn our lives around to become better, take away the blockage, take away the doubt, take away the fear, open, expand my mind like Josiah. Let me bring about reform. Let me seek you, not for my parents, not for my auntie, not for big mama, but for myself. I desire to be one with you. I want you to live in my life. Fill me with the baptism of your Holy Spirit. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. With your hands raised high as you can, say, Satan, Satan. It, didn't it didn't work. Give God a praise break right there. Give God a praise break right there. Give God a praise break right there. <laughs> my God. God bless you this morning. God bless you. If you want someone, oh my good to see you. Want someone to pray with you further, just hold your hand up. Say, look, get my information and call me. Pray with me. Someone will move in. Keep those hands up. Keep those hands up. The rest of you can go back to your seat. There is a calling on your life. And God is pulling you closer. Your fight is not with anyone, but with you and God. Uh, giftedness brings a target. And the enemy wants to fight that. But you got a praying mama. A praying daddy and a praying grandmama in heaven and she ain't gonna let you go nothing will take you because you belong to God Are you with him you got a church boy now he ain't going out this church in the name of Jesus I decree and I declare a yoke breaking release on this young man in the name of Jesus I decree and declare fire to be shut up inside of this Sunday is my takeover this Sunday is my breakthrough this Sunday is my turnaround in the name of Jesus <laughs> Break! Break! My God, my God, my God. Give God a great hand praise in here again. It's just prayer. It's just prayer. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. It's just prayer. Bring out that woman of God. Bring out that woman of God. Here comes. There goes. 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 Oh, he needs to be touched. He has huh? anxiety and depression, trauma, domestic violence survivor. I had him at 14 years old. My God. I'm 24. I'm a business entrepreneur. I almost went to prison this past Wednesday. He needs to be touched. Oh my God. I'm his own mom, only mom. God. He needs to be touched. God. I did not make my accident. I was with the prison. Oh, 
It is not easy being a parent, less more so a single parent, with little boys who have access to so many platforms, so many things. They can just be searching for stuff and you don't know what they're looking for. And it's so relevant and it's so easy, accessible today. So they act out of anger, they respond out of rebellion. And it's a different type of rearing today. They beat it out of us. Oh, I brought you. Y'all weren't in my family, y'all don't know about that. That, that. that was my house. But they knew what they were doing to try to rear us and bend us in the house of the God. God bless you, mother. We're gonna keep up with you. We're gonna pray. Over. Come on, pray for this young lady. We thank God for you that came for prayer. Please do not disconnect from us. We wanna keep up with you and follow you and make sure that we are um, uh, connected with you. Bring your baby. Yes. Where's the little boy that was up here? Quickly, mother, could you bring him back? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, give him a hug and pray for him. Give him a hug. She has a prophetic gift and she did not know what to do with it. But God was tr pulling her to grab this boy and hug him. Yeah, that's the prophetic working right there. How many are glad that when you were broken, God sent somebody to throw their arms around you and pull you in, let you know it's going to be all right, that God's got you. Mother, make sure you connect with uh, Sister Dana and this family, and they'll, they'll keep you close. Dion, where you at? Dion, wave me. Please keep that family close. Keep them close. You're not alone. You might be in Las Vegas, but you're not lost. God knows right where you are at.